Miss Tucker here and today we begin our foray into macromolecules group number two also known as lipids. The first thing that you should know is that there are three different types of lipids and you should probably take a mental note of their functions because they're very different from one another. Uh, the first group are called triglycerides and triglycerides uh, comprise the group that you most commonly think of when you think of a fat uh, or an oil like uh, corn oil or olive oil, uh, butter and milk and cheese, all the fats that are in there are all triglycerides. Um, their main function is uh, for long-term energy storage. So they have lots and lots of energy and um, they are good for you, but not too much, <sighs> like everything. The second group that we're gonna look at are called phospholipids. And phospholipids are actually, um, that's where we're gonna see an introduction of another one of our CHOMPS elements. And of course, phospho refers to our good friend phosphorus. But that's where we're gonna see, we've been talking, major, the majority of the time we've been talking about carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. So now we've got another one of those elements in here. Um, and these are structural components of all living things. Uh, every cell has a membrane. Some cells have membranes inside of membranes, uh, but they're all made up of phospholipids. So all membranes are made up of phospholipids and they're very important and they have very particular characteristics that we're not gonna see with the other groups. Um, and then the last class of uh, lipid is a steroid, which you guys are familiar with, at least in the news media, when we talk about um, anti-doping legislation and things like that. Um, and they actually are chemical messengers, so they communicate with different parts of your body um, so that the brain knows what's going on in all of these various regions because your brain's just in your head, um, but it kind of is the overseer. So steroids are one way that it communicates with other parts of your body and other parts of your body communicate with it. Um, the first thing that's a little bit different uh, between fats and carbohydrates are that Fats don't really follow, or fatty acids, which are more of a building block, they're not really monomers. Um, and that's because fats aren't found in really long repeating chains like we see with carbohydrates and other macromolecules. So we're gonna, so that's why monomers and quotations, and we're just gonna say building blocks. These are the kind of the basis for all of the lipids that we see. They still undergo dehydration and condensation reactions to form the fats, um, and oils and triglycerides, or sorry, triglycerides and lipids and steroids and all of, I'm confusing myself. Um, they still undergo the same chemical reactions, but they don't look quite the same. Um, and these are just some examples of um, fatty acids that are pretty important. Um, the first thing that you'll notice is that we've got long chains of carbon and hydrogen and this um, oxygen group at the end, and that's actually what we're referring to is our COOH, and that is called a carboxyl, car, whoops, carboxyl, a carboxyl group. So long chain of carbon uh, and hydrogen with a carboxyl group at the end, and of course the same color patterns hold true, black, white and red are all carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen respectively. Um, and then fatty acids can either be saturated or unsaturated. And everybody's heard of saturated fats or unsaturated fats. Um, and what you should know, what that means in chemistry, is that saturated means that they've got the maximum number of hydrogen. So there are no double bonds. So these are your saturated fats. There are no double bonds. They've got maximum amount of hydrogen, so they're saturated with hydrogen, and that's what they mean when they say saturated fats. These, on the other hand, are all unsaturated because the double bonds that are occurring between these two carbons and these two carbons, and then you've got a bunch of double bonds over here. Um, you actually, they look like blank spaces, but those are actually where the carbon has its valence shell filled by double bonding with carbon instead of with hydrogen. So we've got at least one double bond. Um, those bonds um, are also shorter, which means that carbon has to get closer together, and that's why you see the kind of bending, like this one's bent around completely, it looks like it's folded in half, and that's because it's got a lot of double bonds, and the bond angles are a little bit different for those double bonds. So the first group um, that we're gonna look at are triglycerides, and you'll notice um, I've got three long chains of fatty acids, three fatty acids, that's where our tri comes from. And um, those three fatty acids are bound to a glycerin molecule, which is where the glyceride comes from. 
So here is where the uh, dehydration reaction is gonna take place. Remember I said they're still formed and digested through the same reactions. So that's a dehydration reaction, which you guys already know, dehydration. That water is gonna come out and then the new bond is gonna form between this oxygen and this uh, carbon on each of these molecules. You'll see that this one is a saturated fat while well, these two are unsaturated. So I've got double bond going on there and a double bond it looks like going on here. Yeah, because there's no hydrogen here or here. Um, these are what you think of most of the time when, when you think of fats and oils, you're thinking of triglycerides most often. Um, these are used for long-term energy storage. Uh, animals store their energy beyond glycogen to actually convert the sugar to a fat. Um, which, you know, it's all carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, so it's not that huge of a stretch. And most plants store starch, but a few store oil, especially in their seeds. Um, when plants put seeds out, those little baby, um, the little baby plants that are inside the seeds need uh, energy to actually push up through the soil, so that's where we see the oils. They're used for insulation, and they're also used for cushion and protection um, for your joints and for your bones and for other things in the animal world. The second group that we're going to look at are phospholipids, and here's kind of what you need to be aware of. That phospholipids are what we call amphipathic, and I'll write that down in just a second. So if you look down here and you see this little ball with these two little legs, they look like weird little creatures um, all dancing all together, um, that we're actually just going to draw that in. So that here, this area is polar, and you can tell by the phosphorus and the lots of oxygen up here, so that's gonna be polar. And then these chains down here are nonpolar. And when a molecule has regions that are polar, strong polar and strong nonpolar, we call those amphipathic, meaning that it's both polar and nonpolar. So we've got any time that this molecule is going to interact with water or an aqueous environment, like on the outside of a cell or on the inside of a cell, then you're going to see that polar area pointed in that direction. And that creates basically a nonpolar boundary. So this is a cross section of a cell membrane, but inside of some cells, you get little compartments, um, and those compartments are membrane bound, and it's the same structure. You're going to have you don't have to know the official name of this, but you're gonna have um, these, these uh, lots of phospholipids surrounding those, and it kind of creates a barrier to prevent really large, important molecules from leaving or entering the cell without the cell's permission. The last type that we're gonna talk about, one that you may or may not be a little from, more familiar with, are the steroids. And steroids are actually composed of four carbon rings. So this is actually a carbon ring, just like um, similar in, in, in uh, terms of like a glucose molecule. And it's a carbon ring because at each one of these little corners there is represented, um, those little bins are represented by carbon atoms. So that's a bunch of, of carbon um, and they're actually, you know, fused together, meaning stuck together. So that's kind of a pretty, pretty particular shape. Uh, they act as chemical messengers between various parts of the body such like uh, estrogen, which is the female sex hormone, and testosterone, which is the male sex hormone. And those actually both, when you hit puberty, uh, cause secondary sex characteristics to develop, whereas they weren't there before. So they start communicating, your brain and the other parts of your body start communicating at that time. Um, and cholesterol, which you it gets a bad rap, but it's actually really important for your nerves to work and for you to actually be able to think and move and do all the things that are fun to do as teenagers and humans in general. Um, cholesterol is actually really important, but if you get too much of it, just like with anything, if you get too much of it, then it is a bad thing, so you kind of have to be careful about that. So that brings us to the end of our video. Some things to, whoops, there we go. Uh, some things to remember um, that are really important for you to be able to recall for the quiz and for knowledge in general are the three types of uh, lipids and the function of each group. Uh, you want to remember on the fatty acid that we have uh, that carbon or that carboxyl group at one end and the carbon, carbon, carbon chains at the other end. So really long carbon chains uh, attached to a carboxyl group. 
you need to know that because of all of these carbon-carbon bonds, so high, so lots of carbon bonds, we're gonna see that over and over again, lots of carbon bonds means that they have way more energy per gram than carbohydrates because they've got way more carbon in them than carbohydrates. Um, and you need to be able to recognize each type. So if I give you a picture of a steroid, then you would be able to know it's a steroid because of the ring structures, because um, you know, of course, because you're a genius, that steroids are four little rings of carbon. So if I showed you a picture of that, you'd be able to identify it as a steroid. You don't have to know individual steroids, just that it's a steroid. Um, or if I gave you a picture of a triglyceride, then you would know that there's three fatty acid chains and then it's a triglyceride. That's all I've got for now. If you do have any questions about anything, make sure to jot those down and bring them to class tomorrow so we can discuss them because I'm sure if you've got a question and somebody else in that class has a question about it, don't forget to take the QIA quiz and I will see you tomorrow. Have a good night.